to welcome you all to this Eucharistic celebration. And today we have uh, a special ceremony within this uh, Eucharistic celebration, the Pallium in Festicia. And uh, I think the Nuncio will explain to us the meaning and the purpose of Pallium. Uh, when I was uh, an altar boy, I used to think that it is meant to decorate the archbishop because it looks very beautiful on the chest. So I think uh, an uh, excellency will explain to us. And so I take this opportunity to welcome now the Apostolic Nuncio to, set, to, to start the Eucharist celebration. Let us welcome the, our Nuncio, the Archbishop, and His Eminence, and all of us together. Let us. Your Excellency, Karibu, Karibu, Sana, Karibu. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Now this ceremony of the conferral of the pallium is a very simple ceremony. We are going to explain first of all what it means. Immediately thereafter, the Archbishop will renew his profession of faith and then also his allegiance, his obedience to the Holy Father. And that second part of it, the allegiance to the Holy Father, is very important in this matter because the pallium is a symbol of that bond, that connection between the Holy See, the Holy Father on the one hand, and the Archbishop, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Nairobi on the other hand. It's like a special connection and the pallium symbolizes that connection and also that privileged position that the Metropolitan Archbishop has in the eyes of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. Let us then immediately get into that ceremony and start to explain, first of all, about the meaning, the symbolic meaning of the pallium. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here in this beautiful church, this minor basilica, the Cathedral Church of the Archdiocese of Nairobi, to participate in a historical ecclesial event, the conferral of the pallium, which His Grace, the Most Reverend Philip Agnolo, the Archbishop of Nairobi, has received from the hands of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, just a few weeks ago on the 29th of June of this year during the solemnity of St. Peter and Paul. In the past, the new archbishops would be invested with the pallium in a solemn ceremony in Rome. Pope Francis, however, to favor the participation of the local church in an important moment of its history and to advance towards the journey of synodality in the Catholic Church, which from the beginning of his pontificate he has constantly emphasized as particularly urgent and precious at this time in the history of the Church, the Pope has disposed to have the conferral of the same pallium to take place in the Cathedral See of the Metropolitan. The pallium, maybe you saw it as it was brought in during the procession, is a liturgical vestment worn by the Metropolitan Archbishop not only in his own jurisdiction, that is, in the Archdiocese of Nairobi, but throughout the extent of the ecclesiastical province where he presides. His Grace will be wearing this pallium in Nairobi and in the dioceses of Gong, Machakos, Kitui, Nakuru, and Kiricho, which form the ecclesiastical province, the metropolitan province of Nairobi. The pallium symbolizes the bonds of the hierarchical communion between the see of Peter and the successor of the apostle and those who are chosen to carry out the episcopal ministry 
as Metropolitan Archbishop. Let us now proceed to the renewal of the profession of faith by the Archbishop. Most Reverend Philip Agnolo, having been appointed as the Metropolitan Archbishop of Nairobi, with a firm faith, believe and profess each and every, everything that is contained in the symbol of faith, namely, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For all men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to, in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the living of the world to come. Amen. And with the firm faith, I also believe everything contained in the word of God, whether written or handed down in tradition, which the church either by solemn judgment or by the ordinary and universal magisterium sets forth to be believed as divinely revealed. I also firmly accept and hold each and every definitively proposed by the church regarding teaching on faith and morals. Moreover, I adhere with the religious sub submission of will and intellect to the teaching which either the Roman pontiff or the College of Bishops enunciate when they exercise their authentic magisterium, even if they do not intend to proclaim these teachings by a definitive act. 
after the profession of faith, now His Grace will receive the book of the Gospel so that he takes now the oath of fidelity, the Holy Father. I, Bishop Philip Agnolo, having been promoted to the see of Nairobi, will always be faithful to the Catholic Church and the Pontiff, Roman Pontiff, the Supreme Pastor, the Vicar of Christ, the successor of the Blessed Apostle Peter in the primacy and the head of the College of Bishops. I will respect the free exercise of the primacy of the Supreme Pontiff over the Universal Church and will take care to promote and defend his rights and authority. I will also acknowledge and respect the prerogatives and duties of the legates of the Roman Pontiff who act in the person of the Supreme Pont Pastor. With utmost diligence, I will carry out the apostolic duties entrusted to bishops, namely to teach, to sanctify, and to govern the people of God in hierarchical communion with the head and members of the College of Bishops. I will watch over the unity of the Universal Church and thus to make every effort to ensure that the deposit of faith handed down from the apostles is preserved pure and intact and the truth to be held and put in practice with the will be passed on and fully explained to all as proposed by the church's magisterium. I will show paternal affection to those who err in faith and I will make every effort to guide them to the fullness of the Catholic faith. Having before me the image of Christ, the supreme and eternal priest, I will conduct myself consciously and reverently and thus fulfill the ministry entrusted to me uh, so that having become myself an example to the flock, I will be able to confirm the faithful in their pursuit of Christian perfection. I will uphold the discipline, com discipline common to the to the whole church and will carefully promote the observance of all ecclesiastical laws, particularly those contained in the code of canon law. I will be ever vigilant to prevent possible abuses, especially with regard to the ministry of the word and celebration of the sacraments. I will diligently look after the administration of the church's temporal goods, especially those destined for divine worship, for the proper sustenance of the clergy and the ministers, and for the works of the apostolate and of charity. In carrying out the mandate entrusted to me, I will show particular affection to all priests and deacons, the prudent cooperators of the order of bishops, and to men and women religious sharers in the same work. I will likewise take great care to promote sacred vocations so that, so that spiritual needs of the whole church will be appropriately made. I will recognize and promote the dignity of lay people and their proper role in the church's mission. And I will be especially concerned to promote missionary work aimed at the evangelization of peoples. Unless embedded 
I will personally attend or properly respond when called to councils and other legitimate collegial actions at a determined time or as the occasion demands, I will give account of my pastoral office to the apostolic see and to the best of my ability, I will respectively state and carry out its mandate to the councils. So, help me God, and these holy gospels which I touch with my hands. After that oath of fidelity, is not the conferral of the pallium by the nuncio to the Archbishop Philip Agnolo. the glory of Almighty God and the praise of the Blessed Virgin Mary and of the Apostles Peter and Paul. In the name of Pope Francis, Bishop of Rome and of the Holy Roman Church, for the honor of the Church of Nairobi which has been placed under your care and as a symbol of your authority as the Metropolitan Archbishop, we confer on you the pallium taken from the tomb of Peter to wear within the limits of your ecclesiastical province. May this pallium, therefore, be a symbol of unity and a sign of your communion with the Apostolic See, a bond of love and an incentive to courage on the day of the coming and manifestation of our great God and Chief Shepherd, Jesus Christ. May you and the flock entrusted to you be glow with immortality and glory in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. After the conferral with the pallium, now the apostolic nuncio fits uh, our archbishop with the mitre on his head. We also now also be upstanding as we congratulate His Grace. As we get seated, we request now uh, His Eminence to go and con congratulate uh, our Archbishop. Tumpigi His, His Eminence Makofi. Akielekea kupongeza askofu wetu mkuu. Bada ya kuvikwa hiyo palia na anakaa vizuri sana nae. Anakaa smart. Maibu fatha kama mweye, hiyo ilikuwa sawa. to go we clap for father as he goes to the archbishop our 
first row coordinator for the Wallace Nganga clap for him as he goes once again. The deans, all the deans, we are 14 dinaries, the deans who are able to come kindly and say, Dean from Kikuyu Centro Dinari, Mango Dinari, and all the other dinaries who are here kindly, Katolo Dinari. As the deans come, I can see Roiro Dinari, Kiambu Dinari, Eastern Dinari, Centro Dinari. We clap for the deans as they come, congratulating. We request all the heads of departments in the secretariat, all the heads of departments in the secretariat, Father Patrick, Father George, Father Simon, all the priests, Father Ndicho, all the priests who are here from the secretariat, kindly. We also request Father David Njao, the communication coordinator, to also congratulate His Grace. I request uh, the CMA moderator to kindly move forward, the CWA moderator, the youth moderator, and our beautiful BMC representatives, the two of them, and we also move forward. At our Totowit, Wanapika, we continue for all of us to congratulate His Grace on this special occasion of the Confar of the Palio. And after that, we shall all congratulate Mpungie Mkono as for Kwetu Mpu. We all congratulate him from wherever we are. And thank you so much. Why are, why are we continue the Gloria? Gloria at this point. We now sing the Gloria with joy. <laughs>
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call our Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. That night was made known beforehand to our fathers 
so that they, they might rejoice in sure knowledge of the oaths in which they trusted, the deliverance of the righteous, and the destruction of the enemies were expected to be to, were expected by your people. For by the same means by which you punished our enemies, you called us to yourself and glorified us. For in secret the holy children of good men offered sacrifices, and with one accord agreed to live the divine law. That the saints will share alike the same things, both blessings and dangers. And already they were singing the praises of the fathers, the word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Response. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his heritage. Blessed the the Lord has chosen us his heritage. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen us his heritage. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen us his heritage. The Lord has chosen us his heritage. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you.
second reading. A reading from the letter to Hebrews. Brethren, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it men of old received divine approval. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he was to receive as an insurance as an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city which he has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received what was promised, but having seen it and greeted it from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God for he has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your descendants be named. He considered that God was able to raise men even from the dead. Hence, he did receive him back, and this was a symbol, the word of God. Gospel acclamation. And be ready. The Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A 
at that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with passes that do not grow old, with a treasure in heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be guarded and your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast, so that they may open to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will put on his apron and have them sit at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third, and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the householder had known what hour the thief was coming, he would have been awake and would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us all? And the Lord said, Who then is a faithful and wise steward? whom his master who set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Truly I tell you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the mass servants and the maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will punish him and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will, but did not make ready or act according to his will, shall receive a severe beating. But he who did not know and did what deserved a beating shall receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much is given, of him will much be required, and of him to whom men commit much, they will demand the more. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is about promises. My mother always told me, don't make a promise if you know already you're not going to keep it. And that advice of my mother came a bit to my mind, listening or reading, especially that first, that second reading of today of the letter to the Hebrews. 
it seems, frankly speaking, that the promises that God had made to Abraham and Sarah seem to be a bit fake. Because look at it. Abraham leaves home and hearth in Haran. Haran, by the way, a city there in what is nowadays Iraq, between the great rivers, the Euphrates and the Tigris. Fertile land, harvests all year round because of the water that comes from the river. But God promises, promises him an inheritance. Go to the promised land and there I will give you a great descendants. So Abraham leaves with his wife, part of his flock, some of the slaves, and also his cousin Lot and his wife and children, but the rest he leaves behind. And you can imagine that the people of Haran were scratching behind their ears saying, why is Abraham leaving? What is he going to do? Where to live better than in Haran? Always water, always sun, always harvest, plenty of food. But Abraham left on a request of his God, left for the promised land, a land he didn't know, a land he had never seen. He only knew he had no direction west. But that land, so God said, in that land Abraham would receive his offspring, which would be more than the sand on the seashore. But you know the story. Frankly speaking, nothing comes of it. The promised land was full of strife, and it was surely not as fertile as Haran was. And in fact, you know the story, Lot and his family and his herds had to separate from Abraham because the land didn't produce enough to maintain them both. And Sarah and Abraham remained without children for many years. And it's only in their old age, Abraham and Sarah were already in advanced age after the age of women, that finally a son is born to them, Isaac. But, you know, let's face it, it's only one son, one child only, nothing more. Not a child, not a boy, not a girl. Was that the whole promise of God for Abraham? You know, it's like when you strike a deal with some kind of shrewd kikuyo. <laughs> you think you have thought it all through, and you tried in the contract to close all the escape routes. But then once you have signed and you've paid the first chair, then suddenly a thousand problems pop up and make that perfect deal into a fake deal. And at the end of the day, you're just happy that he finished at least half of his work. God had promised to Abraham a descendant that would be uncountable, more than the stars in heaven. But then, at the end of the day, there was only one son, only one. And the letter to the Hebrews acknowledges it and says, these all they died in faith, not having received what they promised, but having seen it and greeted it from afar. And if I may add, as if it were not enough, so as to rub a bit more salt in the wound, God then asks from Abraham to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, the long-awaited son, the son of whom it was said, through Isaac shall all your descendants be named. Yeah, the life of Abraham and Sarah and of Isaac and his descendants, it's a bit like the life of all of us. Many dreams that we fancy, frankly speaking, they never come true. And many promises are never kept. Many prophecies, prophecies will never realize. 
Forget about the gospel of prosperity as some of the preachers and prophets want you to make believe. Of course, we all want to believe that God has a better life for us in store, but most of the time, that is pure illusion. Let's face it, a Christian is not better off or worse than a non-believer. In fact, many times it's the non-believer who does much better than you and me. Look to some of our politicians and the corruption in which they are involved. At the end of the day, they grow old and fat with a big car. But what about you and me? people who put their trust in Christ. Maybe, maybe that's the mistake we Christians many times make. We want to see the promises of God come to fruition here and now, in our life. We want to reap the fruits of faith here and now. We want to have those blessings now, God, and not tomorrow or next month, or God forbid, in the afterlife. Let God show these, shower these blessings upon me now. The letter of the Hebrews answers, look to Sarah, look to Abraham, and all those others. They all died in faith, not having received what was promised but having seen it and greeted from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on this earth. Yes, we all feel desperate at times, desperate in faith, and maybe you don't admit it in public because it's not done, but nearly all of us have sooner or later a hard time to believe in that gracious God, in that merciful God, in that God of the living. Life is hard, sometimes too hard. It hits you in the face. It knocks you off your feet. Life can be cruel. Your parents die. Your child develops a cancer. Your husband is hit by a car and paralyzed. We all know of those examples, some in our own family, others with friends. We all have our own portion of suffering and have no illusions. Other portions of suffering will still be thrown at you at the moment you expect it least. And some of us have given up hope. They may still confess their faith in God with their lips, but in their hearts they store bitterness against God. They feel that he has abandoned them, that this God of ours is no good, that faith seems to be false and without foundation. Jesus encourages his disciples. Let your loins be girded and your lamps burning and be like men, be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the marriage feast so that they may open to him and at once when he comes and knocks. Christ tells us not to give up in the face of abandonment and disillusion even if he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them so blessed are those servants, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Faith, the life of faith, is in many ways like a marathon. You start running. And at the beginning, you're full of vigor and you're strong. But then after a while, after an hour or an hour or two, you start to wear out. And there's no finish yet in sight. People tell you, you still have a number of kilometers to go. And you struggle. You get exhausted and you keep on struggling. And you fall over your feet and you're lacking breath and there's still no finish line. 
as St. Paul writes. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way as to take the prize. And everyone who keeps in the games trains with strict discipline. They do it for a crown which is perishable, but we do it for a crown that is imperishable. Yeah, our faith on earth is like a test. And many times it will not, it will not be fulfilled here and now. You may receive some indications, some crumbs that fall from the table, some little share of it, who knows. But the fullness of the promise, the full extent of that imperishable crown that, as Paul calls it, will only be revealed to us in the life to come. The country that we desire for, the life that we aspire is a heavenly one, as the letter of the Hebrew says. God has prepared a heavenly city for us. Today, His Grace Philip Agnolo has received the pallium, sign of the communion between the Holy Father and the Metropolitan Archbishop. And in the prayer at the conferral of that pallium, we said, may this pallium be a symbol of unity and a sign of your communion with the Holy See, a bond of love and, and an incentive of courage on the day of the coming and manifestation of our great God and sheep, chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. May you then and the flock entrusted to you be glow with immortality and glory. So the pallium is an incentive to stand strong on the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it reminds us of that promise of our Lord that he will return on the last day. As the Archbishop confessed in the profession of faith today, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I know, and maybe some of you know, Archbishop Agnolo as a smiling man, a calm man, a man that seems to be unshakable. Whatever happens, he will say, oh. <laughs> But I also know that he had to face his own challenges in life. Already as a seminarian, he had to go through difficulties, but he never gave up. And he was transferred from one diocese to the other, but he never lost faith. The future might have been hidden for him and the horizon might have been shrouded in a thick fog, but he never gave up. He was like Abraham and Sarah, who went through the struggles of life, the beatings of fate, but never gave up on their faith in God. His grace and Yolo went from Bungoma to Kiricho, from Kiricho to Homa Bay, from Homa Bay to Kisumu, and now finally, he made it to the capital city, Nairobi. And the motto of his Episcopal coat of arms is, in Latin, radicentur in Christo, which means as much as to be rooted in Christ, to be rooted in Christ. That is the secret of his service to the church, to be rooted in Christ. He has built the house of his life on the rock, which is Christ, in order that when rain comes and storm is beating that house, he will stand strong and will be able to resist the onslaught of evil in his life. Radicentur in Cristo. 
to be rooted in Christ. To be rooted in Christ so that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which God has prepared. As the opening prayer of today said. Because as a Christian, Archbishop Agnolo, like all of us, he desires a better country than this earthly one. The country which is the heavenly one, as the letter to the Hebrews said. Finally, a personal word to the Archbishop. In the Gospel of today, Peter asks the Lord, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And Jesus answers to Peter, Now, if that servant says to himself, and the servant that is Peter, the servant that is we priests and we bishops, if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants and to, and to eat and to drink and to get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour that he does not know and he will punish him and put him with the unfaithful. The faithful steward of the church is the one who doesn't take personal advantage of his position of power, but is a true servant of the Lord. Dear Philip, let us therefore be burning of that holy desire to build the church of Kenya into that city on a mountain, that city which has foundations that city whose builder and maker is God. So that people may say, with the words of the responsorial psalm of today, blessed the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his heritage. Amen. as we reflect on the word of God that has been broken for us. We may now all arise and profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and His Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. The order of the letter to the Hebrews writes, Faith is confident assurance concerning what we hope for and conviction about things we do not see. With confident faith, then let us pray. For our church and parish community, that we may share with the world the treasure of our faith in God's providence. Let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of nations, that they may make of this earth a homeland of peace and justice for all races and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. For managers, bankers, and economists, that they may conduct their business ethically and justly with concerns for the needs and aspirations of all men and women. Let us pray to the Lord. For missionaries and for those who have given their lives in service to the poor, that they, priceless witness to the gospel, will be richly rewarded. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, and the dying, that Christ will be with them in their most painful and desperate moments, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have died, that they dwell forever in the house of God, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. From age to age, O oh God, you show your love to us. From generation to generation, you call us back to you. Hear the prayers we offer to you this day and give us your grace to recognize your presence in the things we see and to trust your providence in the things we do not see. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church. For in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of your salvation through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our, our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all angels and with all saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrifice which the death you have reconciled for us, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, when filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Philip and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, and advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and uh, uh, Bishop Philip, our Bishop, we uh, David. and also um, the Bishop David and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your people. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have uh, uh, summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather yourself, all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at the passing from this life, Give kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Father to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on other cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy you may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in the blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant our peace and unity in according to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
May we now be upstanding for post-communion prayer. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Let us all be seated for the church announcements. God is good and all the time. Announcements for the day. The Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops continue to urge all Kenyans to be careful with the leaders they elect in the coming elections two days from now. May God guide Kenyans, especially Christians, to elect leaders of integrity and Christian values and whose agenda is development-based, who respect human life, and dignity. Let us avoid leaders who are corrupt and who preach divisive politics. Let us continue praying for peace and prosperity in our country, Kenya, before, during, and after the elections. And I remind on Tuesday is a voting day. Please exercise your civic duty because when you don't vote, you have actually voted for the wrong person. Today and next Sunday we will receive and bless the tithe. No, next week is when we will do that on Sunday. May God bless the work of your hands. Due to today's Pallium University Chair Ceremony, we have postponed our Harvest Thanksgiving Day to Sunday, 14th August, 2022. Now, feast and memorials for tomorrow, this week. Tomorrow will be Monday, Memorial of St. Dominic, Wednesday, Feast of St. Lawrence, and Thursday, Memorial of St. Clair. Happy Feast Day to all Christians who bear their patronage. Infant baptism takes place last Sunday of the month, preceded by four sessions uh, before then. Adult Catechism takes place every Sunday at 11 a.m. at St. John Paul, Cardinal Tunga, 7th floor. Confessions are every weekday at 4 p.m., Saturday at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., and Sunday from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. All Fridays are our penitential days, and we have confessions at 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., and from 12 noon to 4 p.m. On Tuesday, 9th August, there will be national elections. Here at Basilica, there will be only one mass at 9 a.m., the office will remain closed and there will be no confessions on that day. Can I ask those of you who have come from different parishes, the leaders from uh, the PPCs that we invited to just stand so that we can acknowledge you in our midst. All the leaders, a clap for them and thank you for coming and being with us. From the various deaneries, Thank you. You may be seated. After this, I will ask all of you who stood, please, to meet us at the main hall for a brief uh, catch-up. And with those remarks, I will say, most uh, reverend uh, Metropolitan Bishop of Nairobi, uh, Nuncio, Your Eminence, Priest Present, we are honored to have you present, and we thank God for the day. God is good and all the time do have a blessed Sunday. I'm told after this, when we are, the procession is leading out, we'll have a cake cutting. We will ask the children to lead us. Please wait until the procession goes out and then the choir can follow for cut caking. And don't leave before we cut the cake. Thank you.
but I, I was. So you are excellent the apostolic nuncio, uh, eminent UN Cardinal Njue, my dear brothers in the priesthood, uh, brothers and sisters in the consecrated life, and all our beloved people of God, I want to say a few things. And the first one is to thank the Holy Father through the Apostolic Nuncio for the great love he has bestowed on the Archdiocese of Nairobi by today giving me this pallium, which is a sign also of his own presence that is dedicated to me so that that connectivity will remain one charge. I want to say thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio. And I want to thank you also in a particular way, in a special way, for being so close to us, the church in Kenya, and also to administering this, means this uh, occasion today which is so important for us here and for the entire church in Kenya. We promise our prayers and we promise our ever more joyful success uh, and uh, uh, support. To our people here today, as already been told you, we are just before our elections, the campaigns have stopped yesterday. I'm sure today people or the candidates are in some various churches elsewhere, somewhere, to be prayed for so that their success may be assured in God. All is good. I want to bring you my greetings and the greetings of the whole conference and the greetings of all the priests, men and women religious in the diocese or the archdiocese of Nairobi. We thank God for bringing us this far yet again and enabling us to participate in this celebration that we have had today. And we thank him also for enabling us to participate in the civic education that we have had all along up to today, preparing us for civic and patriotic duties of electing our leaders. From the onset, I take note of the largely peaceful and issue-based conduct of campaigns by a majority of leaders seeking various elective seats in the just foregone time of a campaigns. This is a commendable spirit that we have seen. It confirms that our democracy is growing. But unfortunately, we have witnessed also some instances of hateful messages and name calling and all other sorts of ridiculous in our society as we prepare for elections. This is not democracy and it desires to be avoided. Insults, mass slinging, hateful messaging and profiles profiling must never be part of our democracy. Brothers and sisters, as we go to the ballot on Tuesday, already has been told you, and I want to repeat the same to you again, that I appeal to you to turn out in large numbers 
and exercise your democratic rights. This is a God-given opportunity to have your voice heard and to choose your leaders. This is your opportunity to determine the kind of leaders who will govern our country and make critical policies and administrative decisions on behalf of the people of Kenya in the next five years. Do not stay at home and fail to go and cast your votes. But even after casting your votes, go back home and wait for the results. We have opportunity to elect conscious, value-driven value and honest, progressive-minded leaders. And this is our chance. We also have an opportunity to reject those who can cause division in our midst those with malicious intentions and development mandate. We want to use this chance to do the best for our country and do the best for the love of the Kenya, whose first expression in its national anthem is the respect and fear for the Lord. Above everything else, let us vote peacefully. I want to request you to consider this aspect very closely to your heart. Search for peace and vote for peace and pray for peace for our country and for yourself. Let us be mindful of each other. Let us be our brother's keepers. Remember, we have a one country called Kenya. And it's for this country and for the good of this country that we are going to, con to vote on the 9th of August. That it may be better home for all of us. Refuse any form of incitement to cause or to engage you in violence. Like any other sport that we always participate in, in all elections, we produce winners and losers. For those who will be elected, be mindful of others, be magnanimous, in victory and extend a hand of brotherhood to those who will not be successful in elections. That way everyone will be a winner. Kenya will have won. Kenyans will have won. And for those who will not be elected, take stride in your lives. Kenya is still yours. You still have a chance to participate in the development of this country. Participate in it. Even however sad the moments are for you, search for peace within your heart and search for peace in your environment where you are going to be. There will be no, there will be no many other opportunities, there will be no, many other opportunities to come ahead for you to serve this country. Losing is not an end and should never be disputed in such a way that it causes dispute among the wider community and it should never be disputed in such a way that it cannot be taken to court for further redress. We want to ask those ones who have any complaints to feel at liberty to go to court 
so that we may or they may have their cases there redressed as much as possible. And in a way that we also we ask the courts to prepare themselves in such a manner that such cases can be handled and fast tracked for better results and understanding of our country and people in Kenya. Ultimately, as your shepherd, I urge you to prepare to live beyond 9th of August. It is possible for the person you support to lose, the candidate you do not support to win, and vice versa. Whichever the way the polls go, remember, my dear brothers, my dear Kenyans, like a plane, we have landed, we shall have landed on the 9th. Let us uphold our country and let us uphold our relationships such in a, such a way that these results will not disgruntle our relationships with one another. You attend this church, all of you, and each one of you or many of you have different opinions and different choices. But even after elections, you are losers, the losers and the, the winners should not be divided because still, as we say, we share that one God. We abide in God. We abide in Jesus Christ. We urge the Electoral Commission also to conduct the general elections with utmost fidelity to the law and to everything, do everything possible to deliver free, fair, and credible and variable elections. We urge the Commission to facilitate a smooth electoral process that will make it easy for Kenyans to participate freely and systematically in development growth of our country after this time of elections. Our security agents also, we urge you to do your best to seek the, to keep the country safe and create an enabling environment for all the Kenyans to participate in the elections without intimidation, without blackmail and without fear. Finally, as you are shepherd, I want to assure you of my prayers and I want to assure you that even as you go through this process, let us be guided with the prayers and God himself who is our creator and let us be guided with the spirit of considering the reality that we want peaceful elections, we want a peaceful country in the future, a peaceful country that can also invite and attract our own investments and the investment of our church also as well. So with this, I want to ask that we all say the prayer of the angels that will guide us, Mary, Mother of God, Mary, Mother of our Mother in Subukia, will guide us through this time so that we may be relaxed in her own care and our own intercessions and tensions may not prevail over us. We shall stand and pray the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are among all women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are among all women and blessed the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. God, we speak to your Lord, blessed into our hearts, that we, the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel. May by his cross, he brought the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. May the divine assistant remain always with us. But through the mass of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and show his mercy. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. And may the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, our Mass is ended. <laughs>